some of us put our settings so that we don't have to adjust our speaker volume every time we open up a new game. Um, instead, what we do is we adjust the individual game's sounds because those settings exist for good reason. So, like, please, stop hurting us. All right, so Outlanders, it should be on the correct audio device now. Let me reopen the game. I don't have audio, so give me a moment. And as soon as we get that fixed, we will uh, we'll bring everything back up. Oh, I need to mark that as completed. Is your audio working? Oh, you're actually kind of quiet to begin with. Okay. Let me just adjust this, and then it will get it switched over audio-wise. We'll get showing on the screen, and we'll do all this. Okay, so let's get the game on screen and stop our music and turn on its audio down here in OBS. Okay, so this is Outlanders. Um, I believe it's supposed to be a city builder kind of thing. I actually don't really know. But um, we're going to start by checking out the settings as we've been doing, you know, see what accessibility stuff they have. Um... Nothing particularly there, other than it has multiple language support, audio's fine, it did start max, which is kind of a bummer, but everyone doesn't, at least it's workaroundable. Um, nothing really big here. Ooh. Okay. I like this. So it's got audio, it's got UI scale, but at least they let you see what it actually looks like on a screen versus just, do you want 1.5 and you go, what does that mean? Well, it's gonna be 1.5 of... But I don't know what I'm starting with. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start. Um, I don't know much about this game. Let's see. Yorda. Natural leader, her confidence and attitude won her a few fans. Uh, whom she works tirelessly, even if it means putting herself, her life aside. Mission. Be go back to Tutor Island. And review the basics on building a town. Okay, so tutorial. Okay, so when we're talking limited amounts of space, we're talking real limited. Welcome... Oh, that's... Let's start by moving the camera. Alright, so it only supports QWERTY. Oh, you want me to go first. Rotate the camera using Q&E. Zoom in and out. Nice. Now, leader's job is to keep their followers happy. Click on one of your followers and see what they're doing. Uh-oh, this one's pretty unhappy. Followers need food and shelter to be happy. Let's deal with the first... Let's deal with the shelter first. Okay, build. Alright, they really aggressive with the, um... Those things. Alright, um... Okay, we'll just plop you here. Let's build a forager's hut. Look at the forge. Oh, okay. Add a worker. Fair enough. The position will remain open until you remove a worker from another job. Select one of these buildings and remove a worker. Stop it. Select the forager's hut again. There, now since the position is open and removed, uh, Millie, from their previous job, they'll now work here. Cool. There's one last very cool thing I want to show you. Look at the lumberjack's cabin. You click the recycle button to get rid of it. Cool. Oh, is that literally the tutorial then? <clears throat> Success. That's it. Well, not really. There's tons of other things to learn and discover. Um, okay. Next level. Shipwrecked. We're stuck on a small island. We need to build a new ship to keep everyone safe quickly. I don't like the look of that storm on the horizon. Limit, we have 30 days to play it. Our mission, we need to make 40 planks and build a new ship. Optional, have all of your people housed. Sawmill unlocked. Turns wood into lumber. Okay. 
So we're on limited time now. So we need a sawmill. Does it need to be against? I don't know how, how this works. Okay, that's fine. The stockpile. I guess this is building materials in general? Okay. We've got a builder's house. We're making our sawmill. Um, I need... Use get a wood resource. And I don't see in our lumberjacking location here, so we will just plunk you down here. And a lumberjack's cabin. Oh, okay. Um Use to gather wood resources. All right, cancel you. So we're building the road. I didn't. What? I don't want to. I don't want filter. Um. Yeah, so it cuts down trees in a larger area. A useful upgrade. So yeah, it looks like they already gave me the second best um place to cut down wood. So that'll give us our wood. Uh, the forger's hut. Oh, I look like I have a forger's hut. Okay, that's good. And modest housing. Um, I have housing for eight. One second. We have housing for eight. Or whatever that icon is. Six families. I think I have enough housing. Progress. Optional. Have all of your housing. Okay. So I have some people who are unhoused. No problem. We can solve this. Bam. No, it won't let me. Um... Bam. Do it. Cool. And what are you? Oh, that's the boat we need to build. Alright, so I have 30 days to make this happen. So it seems like the idea with this one, well, at least the campaign part, is it? Um, is it's like a mission-based city builder? Where, like, each each map I'm going to have some objective I need to achieve, that kind of thing. And we'll see how that goes. For the moment, I'm basically just waiting for them to... You know... Make the things happen. Can I give you higher priority? Prioritize. Alright, you got me. I'm slouching. My bad. And we can do a stretch while we wait. No problem. So I'm wondering if this is going to be like kind of the puzzle situation where I needed to, um, I needed to tell them to cut down the buildings first, or not cut down, but cut down trees first. Let's, uh, let's slow time real fast. He's okay. So this costs no wood to build, but it's got a very small radius. So I was supposed to build that first. That's fine. <laughs> I 
I don't know what the exclamation mark is. Is that because there's nothing in range anymore? Are we all doomed to die? Oh yeah, so it means there's nothing in range, but it does appear to respawn. Okay. So weirdly enough, it does seem like the idea is you use this tiny little one to bootstrap the other one. And they use the other one to actually do large areas. <clears throat> I'm assuming the trees grow back as well. What's this? Fathers don't have a home. I see. Well, we'll get there. Don't worry. Step one. Make the place that lets me make, um, make more wood faster. We are plowing through our days. This is deeply concerning, because we have 30 days to finish this. We're coming up on day five, and I haven't finished making the thing that lets me get wood. <laughs> All right. So maybe this game is, like, actually difficult and you have to be very strategic going, no, I build this building, then I build that building, then I build this building. Okay, so we finished that. I'll bring the sawmill on the line, which is what we need to actually win the objective. And you're done now. So I'm going to build those way over there so that we, we have a food supply and more lumber coming in. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. And as a reminder, I do anonymous follows. Um, and what that effectively means is I'm more than happy to call out your name saying, you know, thank you for the follow personally. If you would like, you just got to let me know. Otherwise, I just assume you want me to keep it on the down low and, you know, respect your privacy and all that. But welcome to the stream. All right. So it does seem like the music in this game is barely existent like i noticed like the nighttime it just has like the bug sounds and then during the day it plays music a little bit there you go which is fine but as fast as you can plow through days kind of feels weird Keep getting the warning about running out of food. I'm trying to get more stuff built. It's not quite there. Man, we are decimating these trees at a very rapid clip. Yep, I think we're going to go into our settings. We go to audio. We're going to go to music and say, never mind. Because music sounds good, but like. Like, right now, I'm kind of just waiting, which is fine. Like, a lot of these games, you run into that. But because the music is on the day-night cycle and it goes so fast, it kind of is just there and gone, there and gone, there and gone. That's more a streamer problem than anything else. Okay. So it does look like the trees grow back because I got a little tiny one here. And how are we doing on these planks, by the way? Oh, we're already five in. A follower is unhappy because you're homeless. Is your home not built? Oh, there it goes. Now your home is built.
Building destroy Lumberjack's base. What? Oh, oh, right. The one we took apart earlier. I was like, wait. No, oh, we got a babby. I was like, building destroy. I was like, wait, what? Huh? That's right. We chose to destroy it. All right. So we're almost a fourth of the way to getting everything going. Everyone has homes. So it looks like we're in line to actually get the mission done. We're going to max out the number of workers this place has. <clears throat> and just plow through. Okay. So yeah, the builder's gonna get that foraging hut online. Um, remove one person off that. Because now at the point we're grabbing all the stuff, which is concerning, because we're out of food. <clears throat> It's an interesting game because it's like it's like you're kind of repeating the intro part of a lot of these style of games, but I'm assuming we'll go to the next island. We'll have like some new objective that will be more advanced along the way that we'll have to do. A follower is hungry. I bet you are. I mean, oh wait, you want me to do something about it? What's taking a builder so long? Where where? Okay. So tomorrow they should get at least one of these built. Probably both, actually. Um, which will get us more supply for food and everything else. Or they're just going to beeline and just finish the objective. That's cool, too. I can get behind that. All right, we have only eight more planks to go, and then we're in good shape. People are hungry, which is a problem, but, you know. We'll just not let starvation catch up. We'll just leave before the starvation can. That's that's the plan. A follower died of hunger. Um, You remember that previous plan I mentioned? Ah, uh, it didn't work. <laughs> They'll bring us more food. You don't have logs. Oh, we already have all planks. All right. Um, so forget all of you. You're now in this duty. Anyone who's not in that, get food. Cool. And that'll probably do it. <clears throat> it's fine. Stop worrying about the death. You should certainly go on a long voyage with no guarantee of food anytime in the near future. Alright, so it should finish tomorrow, and we'll be on our way in half the time. And no one we cared about died. I mean, with minimal losses. Because I wonder if, like, your population resets every time, or how that works. Like, if it carries your progress forward in some way. Cool, so we have completed the main objective. Neat. Neat. 
Like, I wonder if, like, we only have one person survive this level. We go to the next play level and only have one person, or does it reset? Success. That's everyone's hard work. We built a strong ship right in time. The storm won't catch us now. We built it out of 40 planks, and we did our flowers. As far as it's concerned, we got a perfect score. Excellent. Red Ripe Birthday. My birthday is coming up. Let's fill the town with food, people, and laughter. Pay no mind to the storm on the horizon. It's just a passing cloud. Limit 45 days. Mission have three farms and 50 tomatoes in stock. Optional. Have at least 20 followers with 90% happiness. We've unlocked farms. We've unlocked tomatoes. Okay. We've got some houses. Home not only to Gerald, but to his precious loot, Thunder, who broke in an unfortunate karaoke accident. And we got builders and we got wood. So I have nothing for supplies coming in. Cool. All right, so let's start with that. Um, like before, I have nine planks of wood. So if I got nine, I can bypass doing the little one. I'll go right to that one. So build that thing. And for the moment, entirely too many people working in construction. All right. <clears throat> and we'll need a foraging hut, which was also three wood. No. Yeah, it is three wood. Uh, so we'll build that also right over here. And we don't have any homeless people yet. Uh, no. We're gonna wait on that. We're gonna wait till we get this up and running. Then we'll start building the farm. And we'll get that going. The roads don't seem to make that big a difference in the character's movement. It does seem to make them faster, but where some games it's like 15, 20, 30% faster, it seems like it's maybe 5, 10%. Okay. There you go, the builders here, and we're going to tone that down. So they start getting some people collecting food. Alright. So with that, um, I'm not going to be able to make the farm yet, because I have to have planks for that. So I need to make a sawmill. So we get that starting to move. A nice fellow, talented singer, and all-around free spirit, he sees his followers as friends, as opposed to his brother, who he says is a buzzkill. Excellent. Okay. Alright, so when that's done, we'll want to have the farm ready. Cool. <clears throat> 
and are basically just waiting for them to continue to collect the wood and all that, build the um the sawmill, start using the sawmill to turn the plant the uh, wood into planks. Pretty standard stuff. It's kind of neat that this sort of treads the line between a tutorial as well as like. You know, it's it's kind of like a mission-based thing. Because I kind of like that it's doing that. Because one of the problems you run into with a lot of these styles of games is very genuinely end up into this problem where... Sorry. I'm trying to juggle ideas. Um, where what will end up happening is you're like, you'll start building, you don't know what you don't know, so you start laying things out. You realize your layout's terrible based on what you're trying to accomplish. And that becomes a problem. Um, and, like, you can't fix it. So it's nice that's like, okay, here's how you build this, and then they bring in the next wave, and here's how you build this, and they bring in the next wave. So if you, like, really botched the layout of one of your previous ones, you just move on to the next one. It's like, that's fine. I'm trying to get the farm up and running as fast as possible so people aren't starving. The dweller does not have a home. Okay. They're still grabbing the mushrooms and cutting down the trees. in there there's no more space in the stockpile okay um I don't see... Oh, there we go. More stockpile. Yeah, so... There, that'll help. <clears throat> so for right now, I don't think we really need more planks for anything. We cut back and all that. A couple extra people working on building to get the stockpile expanded and to get this farm up and running. A kid grew into an adult. Alright, so I have a farmer. Yes, I had 45 days to accomplish this run. Day 8. I've already got the farm moving. My assumption is once I get the farm moving, the starvation will be way less of an issue. Because you can only imagine farming has got to be more efficient than, you know, picking up mushrooms in the woods. Of course, on the other side of it's probably going to be there's a delay between starting your food production and actually getting your food, which is pretty standard for that. Two followers died of hunger. Excellent.
Alright, so stockpiles being expanded. Um, so I'll unpause this now. I just want to make sure they got that stockpile expanded at least enough they can put that to use. I'm hoping those tomatoes will grow soon. Yeah, second person on that would help. Don't need lumber. I don't need planks. Keep the builder doing their stuff. And two more people die of starvation in the morning. Yay! There's food there. Just have to eat it now. Okay, I'm assuming the next day we'll actually get the tomatoes because they made a whole bunch of them have flowers. Um, and that's usually right before you have flowers, you have tomatoes. Like maybe they'll have a day where the tomatoes are green and then they'll be red the next day. I don't know. What's the turn for the tomato? How many days? I have no idea. Um, that might be telling me it's three days. That might be telling me I get three tomatoes when it's done. I don't really know. You can't. It must be that you get three per batch when they're done. This must be what that's trying to communicate. Because it clicks the whole area and it tells me that. It seems to be we're like we're not pushing too far so far as our um hunger goes. Of course, this might be communicating to me that I only have three villagers left, which is somewhat alarming. But that's okay, right? Okay. So we're starting to get actual tomato plant, like tomato tomatoes, good. We tone that down. I think it reassigned here. I'm running out of food. Well, that should improve. I've got a whole bunch of tomatoes on the vine and a whole bunch of people going to be working those. Yeah, I think our population is literally three. That we, uh, we allowed all but three of our people to starve. It's fine. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. Because, do you know what's happening? Is all those tomatoes are rolling in and our happiness is over 80%. Well, now my, it's slightly below 80%. It's fine. So it's like, because all our people starved and made it easier to manage food, it's weirdly working for us because now we're not eating nearly as much and they're actually keeping up with the tomatoes pretty well. The three and only three people who are all farmers. And I remember how much you're supposed to get, like 40. Yeah, and our happiness is getting super high. This is perfect. Having most of the city die was one of the best things we could have happened. Just the way it works sometimes.
So I think we're supposed to get 50 tomatoes is the goal. What, what am I missing? Oh, have three farms. My bad. I should actually pay attention. and Have at least 20 followers with that. All right, we can do this. Um, so we need twelve planks, three wood. Yeah, get all the supplies. So one of our farmers is now fired. Wait, what's the other one doing? Oh, you're still foraging. Stop that. I don't need that anymore. So we've got the tomatoes. I just need them to build. Honestly, take you off and have it down to one. You get two of you building. Because we got all the tomatoes we need to win the objective. We just need that. It's like, have 20 happy followers. I'm like, well, how's three sound? Like, they're super happy, though. Like, they really are super mega happy. Why settle for quantity when you can have quality? Yeah, it's basically I'm supposed to have three farms. I think the idea is that you end up, like, carving this all out and you make several farms here. Um, because for, like, keeping the higher population, you probably need that. Because I have noticed our population isn't going up, now I only have three people. I couldn't imagine why. But, you know, it is what it is. It's fine. Alright, we just need one more farm. And what we might do is we might check out the next map and see what it's like, and then check out the next demo. This seems like a pretty fun game. It's pretty straightforward. It's like not really breaking too much from the um the formula. The art style is pretty interesting, but um the thing I am liking is that it's kind of more like mission based. So it's like kind of it's kind of like doing the um the way like Banished and that plays the game. It's just instead of focusing purely on survive, make big city kind of thing, it's like, okay, this time you need to do this, this time you need to do this. Now granted, so far, the missions have felt very tutorial-esque in introduce mechanic, okay, do the thing again. And, like, where they held your hand on the previous time, whatever they were holding your hand on the previous time, now they're just like, just do it. And so I don't think that's bad. But, um, the question is, like, what depth does the game have? Cool. I don't care. Because I'm not getting new people. Hey, look, suddenly a whole bunch more villagers we didn't have. Excellent. And a very impractical farm where it's just one farm field and then, like, a whole bunch of stuff going around. Next. <clears throat> Mark these as complete real fast. Big trouble in cookie... Oh, wait, I wanted to go back. I didn't see what it was. Or is unlocked. It turns stone or whatever. What What was the thing? Decree tip. Decrees have powerful beneficial effects, but the longer they're active, the more taxing they'll become on your followers' happiness. You can cancel them after three days. Followers keep to themselves, resulting in less children being born. They won't be happy about it. Love each other. Followers will love more and love more and work less, resulting in more children being born. And then you can ration food. What is our actual objective? Oh, okay, here we go. 
A terrible storm has left our town in ruins. Many houses, including mine, have been destroyed. I need to establish strict rules to ensure the town's survival. Survive 35 days and finish with at least 50 followers. Optional, have a stone stockpile. Cool. And repair the leader's house. Yeah, so it, it basically just resets. What you did in the previous one doesn't change anything. Alright, so let's go. And very first thing is we already have these farms. Um, please... Put that to use. And we have houses, houses, houses. Yeah, we definitely didn't give them these nice of houses. A builder's place, a sawmill, a lumberjack's cabin. Is there no other food? We'll start by hacking the crap out of all that wood. And get all the builders we can repairing the farms. We have literally no food, so that's also a thing to do. Alright, um... Deprioritize you a bit. It looks like the idea is I get these farms up, but I have to um, get rid of the rocks to make them useful again. We have five homeless people. All right. Running out of food. I am aware. Our farmers are planting. We've already got all of our foragers foraging. By the time we get more for like if we were trying to build in our forager, we would just have our farms already handling it, so that's fine. <clears throat> Let's try and get our food settled. And that seems like we just need to repopulate kind of thing. Okay, so take two off of here. Get more people assigned to some of these other things. Right now, take you off there. Put you assigned on here as well. Hey, Oceanic, how's it going? Alright, so we're collecting food to keep us covered while the, uh, the farms are brought back online. Are you? Uh, I'm doing pretty alright. I've been dealing with a cough for a while, so you can tell my voice is a little off at the moment. But hanging in there. Alright, let's take two of them off of that. And get them on with the builders. Because we're running out of mushrooms in range, so there's no point in keeping them maxed out on their workers. Would tea up? Yeah, I've been drinking tea. Unfortunately, the uh, the thing that has like the tea stuff in it came open in this last batch. But yeah, I've been doing a uh, tea and honey for quite a bit. Yeah, but so this is definitely teaching us how to do the rock resources. The plan with this one. 
It's just first we need to establish our food, and then we need to use the, um, the thing to get rid of rocks and start chipping away on these. Oh, I can't get rid of those ones. Interesting. Move some of those farmers over. Yeah, we'll leave two farmers on that one for now. Yeah, put two farmers per farm for the moment. We got one person making planks. We got those two there. An extra person working on that. We got three builders going, which are going to get through that, and that should be good. Bunch of followers are hungry. Yep, three followers died from hunger. Six followers died of hunger. We lost them from one of the farms and the builders' houses. We literally lost all of the farmers from the other farm. Lovely. Okay, they run out of anything in range there. Alright, so the Forager's Hut's trying. We just have, like, one more in-game day, and then our tomatoes will start coming up. And once that happens, we should start being in better shape. And they'll start telling our people to have lots of babies. Alright, six more died. Fifteen more died. Um, they basically came from everything. Lovely. Uh, we need more people on that. We need more people on that. We need them on that. Yeah, don't worry about the wood for a moment. Well, we probably just gamed over this one. Yeah, so, uh, so just decrees. Love each other. I like this game. It's been alright. Like, it's not a bad game. It's it's kind of a different, like, mission take on the settlement builders. Um, the thing I'm finding curious is, like, even though I... Oh, did we just die? Is that what just happened? You have no followers left. Yeah. So, I'm not gonna play through the whole level. <clears throat> But, like, we, right from the beginning, so, like, right at the beginning, I assigned everyone to be on this right from away, and then, like, immediately met the farmer the first priority, and we didn't even get enough to get that going. So, the only thing I can think is building a second foraging place, but if you look, there's, like, very little mushrooms and all that over here. So, I am curious about a lot of that. Um, it is an early demo and all that. But I do like the idea that what I was saying is like instead of having like a, a tutorial tutorial that they kind of did a thing where it's like they'd introduce a mechanic and they'd build up and they'd introduce a mechanic. But you know it's like some of the stuff they already built for me this time so I didn't have to like redo it. But yeah, it does seem weird. Um, but it seems like a good game. I think this one's still like only a demo early access so it might be just like a balance thing they've got to sort out. Or it could be I just miss playing it. But yeah so this one's been pretty fun. Um, I do think I'm going to go and move on to the next game so I'm going to go ahead and do is hide the screen, uh, kill the system sound, and close the game. Yeah, that was Outlanders. Um, it does seem like a fun game. Is this actually for sale, or is this like... No, it's, um... 
Okay. It's not out yet. All right. Yes, yeah, so they probably just haven't done their like balance pass yet. That's fine. But that seemed like a fun game. That'd be one to be curious to like play the demo again when it's like released to see how the balance is.